Hey everyone, good morning. It's Rebecca and uh, it's my birthday today. And I'm so pumped to be live with you on my birthday. That's just like extra special and extra cool. So let me just tell you before we get into today's topic, which what we're talking about today is we are wrapping up our series on the five types of people that we ought to avoid. And today we're talking about chronically negative people. Negative Nellies is what we're talking about today. All of us have these people in our lives. So before we get to that topic, good morning, everybody. Hey, thank you. Thank you for the birthday wishes. It's already been a cool birthday. So if it, the day continues like this, life's going to be good. Um, but before we get into the topic, I just want to tell you that I've got a couple of really fun birthday giveaways that I'm doing this week because um, I'm going to celebrate my birthday all week long. I think that's what we should do when we get to this age, right? Um, hey, Kelly, good morning and thank you. Thank you, thank you. So we'll get into the topic here shortly, um, but I want to just do a quick intro as usual. I'm Rebecca Undem. I am the now today 37-year-old author of How Mommy Got Her Groove Back and founder of a group coaching program called Groove School. And uh, every week on Rebecca Undem Live, so this weekly Facebook show, uh, we talk about topics to help you just live a better life, and I really am passionate about helping people that feel a little isolated in their rural environment. So if you're like 70 miles from Target like I am, that's what rural feels like. You just feel a little alone. And so um, every week we come together at 9 a.m. on Monday mornings to give us like a burst or like jolt for the day, and uh, it's been really fun. And this is a series that we're doing. I'm starting a new one next week, so we'll talk about that too at the end here, but Today we're going to be tackling negative Nellies. It's tough. But every single week on Rebecca Undem Live, I give away a book. I give away a, a full signed copy of my physical book. And even though I know this person has a copy, um, I'm sending her one because so we do I do a, a random winner. And so anybody that participates gives some comments, shares some input about the topic and how they're using it or how they have used it, they get their name into a drawing for a free book. Last week's winner from our call last week, which was about um, being surrounded by yes people, people that basically are just sucking up to you and aren't telling you the truth, and they're saying every idea you have is a good one when that's just not the truth. Molly Besky, you are my winner. So I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i tag you in this. I know it's hard for you to join live. You're probably not going to see this, but I will tag you, and I will send you a book, and then you can gift the gift of Groove to somebody else because I know you've already read it. All right, so let's get rolling, shall we? Um, okay, so this series, this five-part series, we've covered five different types of people that we ought to avoid. Um, I say ought to avoid, that's ideally, right? In an ideal situation, you could just avoid them. Sometimes that doesn't always work. And they came directly out of the companion workbook to my work, or my book, called the Groove Finders Guide Series. And so it's 14 guides, 14 ways to find your groove. I'll be giving you a link to this at the end so you can download uh, the PDF for free. It's a full workbook. But this content, this five-part series, came from this workbook. And I just, I know the value and the importance of surrounding yourself with good people. It really does matter. And we all talk about it, but I think we talk about it in a really um, almost cliche and theoretical kind of way. Like, oh, yeah, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And then we say it like that when really we, the influence that other people can have on us is not to be ignored. And so the types of people we've covered so far is um, we started with the victim thinker. I was like, why is this always happening to me? Oh, it's so sad, my life's terrible. The blamer, like looking, always looking for, pa they're always passing the buck, right? Looking for a scapegoat. The third type was the passive aggressor. I would say that of all the, the, the four that we've done so far, the passive aggressive one is one that I think struck a chord the most with people because passive aggressive individuals are a type of person that really can be hard to figure out. Like, how do I maneuver this person? Like, especially if you can't get away from them and you, maybe you work with them, right? Last week, again, was yes men, like the yes people. They just say, yeah, 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 yeah. And we were talking about it in the context of being open and willing to, to get constructive input from people. And yes, people don't do that. They just tell you that everything's great. And then today, the last type of person is the negative Nelly. So when I think about people that are, you know, chronic complainers, um, they're the type of individual. So we're talking about chronically negative people, the people that literally can never see the good in anything. Like not only is their cup half empty, there's not a damn drop of water within a 15 mile radius of that cup. Like their cup is barren 
and dry, not just half empty. And you, you know, you feel you can feel it. They come into your space. Maybe you work with them, and they come to, walking down the hall, and right away everything tenses, and you just think to yourself, "Oh Lord, give me strength. I can't deal with this person." That's that's chronically negative people. I'm going to tell you, I've got I've got some tips for like, what do we do? Like, how do we deal? Hi, Bethany. Thank you, and Beth and Mavis. Thank you for the happy birthday wishes. Um, I get that. Uh, so I want to kind of tell you a little bit of the tips that I have for you. I we addressed this with one of our group schoolers quite quite a while back now on a coaching call, and this happened to be a family member. And so again, they think about this for your own context. And if you have a specific situation, like if it's work or it's personal, and you want me to address something about it, just throw it in the comments, and we'll talk about it. But as always, my very first like tip for you is if you can avoid them avoid them. If you can limit the amount of time that you have to spend with an individual like that, do so. There cuz they're truly it's it's um we cannot underestimate the impact of somebody that only sees the downside of everything. Sometimes it's good to have people that are pragmatic and realists. That's a good thing, but that's what they'll come back with. So I'm not a pessimist, I'm just a realist. And if you find yourself constantly wanting to remind them how negative they are, then you have to change you. Because here's the truth. We can't change other people ever, okay? That's that's the first rule, right? But secondly, if we can't change the environment, so if we can't shift departments or we can't, I don't know, leave the environment somehow, we have to change our relationship to it. That's what coping is, right? We're not going to be able to change the other person, so what do we do? What do we do to make this manageable for ourselves? Okay, so number one, of course, is avoid them if you can. So number two if this person is a complainer, as in they're always, they've always got something that they think isn't working or isn't right or isn't the way it's supposed to be, you can engage them in conversation about that. You can try to turn them, you know, help them become a problem solver. And again, I'm going to give you this caveat on this. This is going to take some time and energy investment on your part. And that's not necessarily worth it unless you have to have a relationship with them. So if this is like somebody you have to work on a team with at work, this might be worth trying, okay? If it's not, just remove yourself from them and don't think another thing about it, okay? All right, so here, here is, here is I, actually, I researched this one for you guys today. I found this on Psychology Today, and I think it's flipping brilliant. So I would love to hear what you guys think about this. So kind of steps for... How do you help somebody that literally all they want to do is bitch and moan? How do you help them transition into a problem-solving mentality? If there's, a, there's a plan. There's a process. So I'm going to share it with you. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is try to get them to identify the outcome that they would like to see, which that alone is a huge mindset shift because typically chronic complainers are just like, this sucks, that sucks, that's the worst, this is crappy, right? Right. And they're, you're like, well, what's crappy about it? And what do you want to see happen? Like it's trying to help them get to this place where they're thinking about what the outcome would be. So a way you could ask it is just to say, okay, if you could pick any outcome you want for this, what would you want it to look like? Or if I had a magic wand, what would you want me to create for you here? You know, and not be snarky about it, but be honest. Like I want to help you figure out how to get beyond this. And you could look at them and you could say, You've been complaining about this for a really long time. Why don't we try to come up with some solutions? So let's sit down and talk about it. And that's the other thing, too, is sometimes, now not everybody, but sometimes a chronic complainer is complaining because seriously nobody's hearing them. A lot of times, yes, that is on their in their delivery, right? You're ignoring them because it sounds like the same note all the time. But again, going back to if you have to work with them, if you have to try to achieve goals with this person, it's in our best interest to try to figure out how to get them to shift their mindset. Okay, so maybe it's, if I had a magic wand, what would the outcome be, okay? And they decide what that is, whatever it is that they're complaining about. Then ask them the question, how motivated are you to be the one to make this happen? So this, this kind of wraps in the victim thinker and the blamer the idea that you're not going to be passing the buck to somebody else. How motivated are you to be commit, you know, to be a part of the solution? And you get a number on a scale of one to ten. Okay, so let's say they say seven. You can say, huh, here's the third part. That's really interesting. Why didn't you say a lower number? And what this does, so this is the part that I thought was like actually kind of mind-blowingly brilliant, because you can do this with kids, you can do this with anybody. 
that you're trying to figure out what their motivation is, if you say, hmm, that's interesting, why didn't you pick a lower number? They're going to supply you with some sort of an answer and that becomes their motivation to work hard to achieve the solution. And it gives you something, just again, just last week in group school, our topic of the month was coaching other people. And if you have the motivation or the big picture goal for a person that you are trying to motivate them to do something, when you know what their motivation is, that becomes the thing that you remind them of. Every single time it gets hard, every single time they wanna quit, every single time they wanna bitch and moan and complain instead, you can say, uh-uh, remember, this is, what you, this is why you're doing this. This is why this matters. Now let's keep staying positive, keep staying focused on how we can move forward. So it's like this little Jedi mind trick to get them to tell you what it is that they're motivated by. I hope you find that as mind blowing and as amazing as I did, because I think it's pretty stinking cool. Okay, so can't avoid them. You have the conversation. They're still not turning around. Now what? Okay, so now we're at this point where you, you're you trying to work with them. You're trying to get them kind of solution oriented, and they still are just falling back into this trap. So this conversation we had in Groove School where it was one of our Groove Schoolers was talking about a family member. This is what we talked about to help her, okay? What has to happen in order for this to, to have, for you to have a relationship with somebody that you feel this depleted by is, well, first of all, is recognizing that disliking a person or, or kind of even having almost borderline hate in your heart for somebody is only toxic to you. So you've got to look at the person and ask yourself, do I want a relationship with this person? Do I want to have any, any sort of a, a relationship with this person as they are? And if so, then we've got to put boundaries in place. Now, every, and again, I'm just going to say it. Everybody hates the word boundaries because it sounds so ishy. But truthfully, boundaries are the thing that allow us to love people as they are. Because if we, if we don't put any boundaries in place, and we're gonna talk about three different kinds of boundaries we could potentially put in place with a negative person like this. If we don't put anything in place, we are not loving them. And so what we are, all, all of us are afraid of saying, well, I put this boundary in place with this person because it sounds like we have some sort of power or control. That's not the case. Us putting a boundary in a place, it releases us from that, feel, those feelings of just disgust and fury and annoyance and it allows us to love them as they are. So boundaries are actually the humane thing to do, okay? So here are a few things you can, you can put boundaries around. You can put a boundary around the amount of time that you choose to spend with somebody, okay? So maybe it's just saying like, I will spend time with you, um, but I will limit it to a couple of hours, like no more overnights. And again, this is more if it's family, but it, even still, you can think about this at work. How can you use a time boundary for yourself at work? Time is one, uh, location is another. And that kind of correlates with time, like maybe it's, um, I will only have my parents come and hang out with me and my kids when we're at a ball game or somewhere neutral, right? Where it's not on anybody's turf. Okay, so time and location. You can also limit topics. So maybe there are just certain things, and this happened to be the case um, with the Groove Schooler example. So she, she had, it was actually her dad, and every time she brought up her kids, he would kind of go into this angry kind of negative rant about how he didn't like the way she was raising them, basically, which really sucks. And yet she wanted a relationship with him and she wanted a relationship with her mom. And so topics like it's sad to imagine that you would have a, a, a friendship or a relationship where you couldn't talk about your children. But again, it's we've got to at some point recognize that we can't. We have to release the idea of who we wish people could be and accept them as they are. And if we cannot accept them as they are, then you cut them out completely. And I'm not saying that that's maybe not the case, but most of the time when it's family, we want some semblance of a relationship. And it's okay to do these things to make it possible for you. So maybe it's topics. There are certain things you will not discuss with that person. Okay? Then the third is simply just putting, uh, it's, this is more of an attitude thing, it's a mindset thing, where you're choosing to, to put an energy boundary on it, like recognizing going into a situation, maybe you have to say a little mantra, maybe you have to say a little affirmation, maybe it's a little self-talk, and you simply go into it saying, 
I am not going to let their energy bring me down no matter how negative they are. And if I start to feel it, I'm giving myself permission right now to cut the visit short or whatever, you know? So these are things because again, we can't change other people. And if we want them in our lives, we've got to figure out a way to put some limits on how much time we spend with them. Um, one other tip with, with um, family is if you can switch topics, like, Always come back and say, why don't you tell me something about when you were young or tell me about, you know, your favorite, you know, and just get them talking. And, and this example um, happened to be with an older, her father is older and that generation, they do, they like to reminisce. So think of a few things you may want to ask them about to get them talking about themselves. And then you're enjoying conversation with them. And yet you're not harboring this frustration because you're not talking about you. You're talking about them. So switching topics can be a really valuable thing and it can be exhausting. But again, if you've got a limit in place for how much time you're gonna spend and you've got a, an intention about not letting your energy get sapped, it can help, okay? So that's what I got for you for some ideas. I would love to hear what you guys think. This is a challenging one, especially when it's family. It can be so, so painful. It can be so, so hard. Um, okay. And then the last thing I wanted to say, I'm looking at my notes here, just to be sure I don't forget anything. The last thing I wanted to mention is that um, in the free workbook, if you don't have it already, again, I'll post the link and you can download the PDF. There is a guide that's called the GrooveFinder's Guide to Not Taking Things Personally. And I highly recommend that you read that if you're struggling with a really negative person, because oftentimes negative people, it just leaks all over, it just spews all over everybody. And if you are the one that spends a lot of time with that person, you start to take it personally and you take it to heart. Um, and oftentimes I am like laughing in my, like thinking you're not that special. Like if anybody else were sitting there with them, they'd be doing the same thing to them. And so that guide has got four really practical ways that you can, you know, go into a situation and think, okay, this isn't about me. It's about them. I don't have to own it. All of those things, right? So if you struggle, I would recommend that you take a look at that as well. Okay, so to real quick uh, recap for chronic complainers or negative Nellies, the ones that don't see the good in anything and complain and gripe about everything. First of all, avoid them at all costs if you can. Secondly, try to help them become a problem solver by using the three-step kind of like little script where you first say what outcome do you want on a scale of one to 10. Number two, on a scale of one to 10, how motivated are you to be the one to help get there? And then number three, whatever they say, you say, hmm, that's interesting, why didn't you, pick a lower number. And that hopefully will they will supply you with some sort of an answer and you'll get an inside peek at what their motivation is to make this better and you use it every single time they get off track, okay? And if that doesn't work, put boundaries in place with the person. You put a boundary in place of time or location. You can put a boundary in place of topics that you will not discuss. You can put a boundary in place around your own energy. Because at the end of the day, we always need to remember that nobody causes us to feel or do anything. It's a choice that we make. And that's a hard reality. And I, I mean, I'm telling you, that's what I want to say right now, too, is this. So this is the fifth type of person. We have victim thinkers, blamers, passive aggressive people, yes people, and negative, chronically negative people. These are the five types of people we ought to avoid. In all honesty, I absolutely demonstrate or show signs of being all five of those types of people at different times. The difference is what we, once we know better, we have to choose better. And then most importantly, we have to recognize the impact that these people have on us and we should try to avoid them if we can. And if not, go back and watch the other lives. There's, you know, they're, they're listed in there. You can see the caption on the video. You'll be able to see which one you're looking for and seriously commit to trying to put some things in practice for yourself because relationships are hard. Being a human being is hard. And hopefully these five, um, these five little Facebook Lives have made it easier for you. So, all right, book giveaway. All you gotta do is just engage with the topic, right? Just talk to me a little bit about what you, you know, what if you're struggling with something and the stuff that we just talked about, you don't feel like it's gonna address it, ask and we can talk about it. Hi, Carmel, thank you. Thank you very much. It is my birthday. It's an exciting day for me, it's fun. Um, but that's what you got to do for the book giveaway for next week. And then I wanted to say next week we are kicking off a new four-part series. And it's called The Giving Thanks Guide. And it sounds like this is not just your kind of normal platitude of the attitude of gratitude. It's real ways to try and cultivate more 
true deep thankfulness in your heart and it's the t it's the season right so it'll be a fun one four parts um so join me for that okay birthday giveaways here's what we got so first of all i'm going to give you the free link to the guide or the workbook which i give every week so this is not anything special but i want to remind you now i have had my group coaching program group school since march and we've got um, 40 women in the group right now. And there are a lot of you that have reached out to me. There are a lot of you that have um, talked, like expressed interest in it. I don't know what, what's been holding you back. I have no idea. But today and this week, you've got a week. You've got until Friday to, to get off the fence and just join us. Because the thing I want you to know is you can cancel at any time. It's a monthly subscription. So if you get into it and you're like, you know what, this just isn't what I thought it would be or it's not really right for me, then you can quit and no questions asked. Well, I shouldn't say that. I will ask, what could I have done differently? Because that's what I ask everybody that leaves if they leave the program, okay? But when I say no questions asked, it's not like I'm going to give you grief about getting your money back or quitting. I'm not, I'm not going to do any of that, okay? So normally, right now, standard rate, it's $47 a month or $467 a year. You can buy an annual subscription to Groove School. And that's actually a two month savings, so it's a pretty good deal. But it's my 37th birthday today. And so I created a coupon code for all of you to come and join us for $37 a month, okay? So it's just called when you go into Groove School, and I'll post these in, in the comments as well. Um, you go into my just my main page and you click enroll, you can, you can sign up right there for Groove School for $37 a month or 367 a year, okay? And the coupon code is birthday birthday monthly or birthday annual. So I'll post those. And then, because I, we just talked about people, right? We talked about the five types of people. And real quick, I'm gonna read Katie's comment. Cut through the noise and clutter with narrowing it down. Awesome, thank you, thank you. I hope you put it into practice. Cause that's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, whoever is here, this isn't, we all talk about personal development. A lot of people read books. Great, read books, <clears throat> but for the love, put something into practice. If you don't do anything with the things that you read, your life isn't changing. You maybe feel better, but nothing's changing. You're not actually creating new habits. And that is what we do in Groove School, is we help change habits, okay? So because people are so important to me, and like we just talked about five types of people to avoid, and then I talk a lot about the nesties and the people that you love the most and the people that cherish you, I get how valuable it is to join things with a buddy. So, my second offer for you for Groove School is that through Friday, if you and a buddy join, you can both come in at 27 a month. And I haven't offered the $27 monthly rate since I started the program. And the part it's the party starter rate is what we called it when we first launched back in March. So for $27 a month, you get full access to me as a coach. Like literally, you can ask anything. We have a live training call. We have a live coaching call. We've got guest experts that come on. And this group of women, they're freaking phenomenal, okay? So if you are at this place in your life where you want to make a change and you know you need to do something and you're just not sure what it should be, that is enough to check out this program. It's less than, it would be less than a dollar a day if you join with a buddy, okay? So I will post all the details to this. Hey, Jody, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I will post all the details to that in the comments, but spread the message, spread the word. We, it's, it's something you have to experience. And again, if it's not for you, it's not for you, but you're never going to know unless you try. That's the action I'm encouraging you to take today. If you've been on the fence, if you've thought about it, quit thinking about it and just do it. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining me again on Rebecca Undum Live. It's so much fun. I love, love, love this part of my business, and I love having you all hang out with me every Monday morning. And we will be joining you again next Monday at 9 a.m. to kick off the Giving Thanks Guide. And uh, have an awesome and groovy, groovy week. And I will have an amazing birthday. Thanks to all of you being in my life, okay? Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day. Talk to you soon.